New research shows that 114 million people have diabetes in China, making the country home to the highest number of diabetics in the world. Research also shows that weight gain leads to type 2 diabetes in Asians at an even lower body mass index than other ethnicities. And obesity is on a rapid rise in China, a dire consequence of the increased popularity of a Western diet packed with high calorie convenience foods and the more sedentary lifestyle made possible by modernizing economy. And all of this is putting a strain on China's health services as the government works to cope with the diabetes epidemic. Joining me now to discuss the impact of obesity and diabetes in China and Chinese communities worldwide, Dr. Ida Chen, Director of Biochemistry and Molecular Genetics at Los Angeles Biomedical Research Institute at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Small title. Dr. Chen specializes in insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes in the Chinese population. Thanks so much for joining us. And also Scott Chan, he's a Program Director for the Asian Pacific Islander Obesity Prevention Alliance and an organization that offers innovative programs to help the Asian and Pacific Islander communities in fighting obesity in Los Angeles. He's trying to challenge her for an even longer title. I want to thank both of you for coming in. Uh, long titles, but let's, let's start uh, with short. Talk to me about the different types of diabetes, Dr. Chen. Uh, there's diabetes type 1 and diabetes type 2. Uh, to understand the difference, we first understand that type diabetes is high blood sugar in the blood and it requires a molecule, a hormone called insulin to remove the glucose into your body, which provides nutrition, but at the same time, decrease the glucose in the blood. Type 1 people do not have insulin because their pancreas is gone. Type 2 people have insulin, but the body do not respond to insulin. So we call this insulin resistance. So these are the two fundamental difference. Why the staggering numbers in China, would you say? It's increase of food, amount of uh, the abundance of food and the type of food, modernized food, you know, the people used to eat vegetables or they have gardens. Now they have power bars or soft drinks instead. And also it's more cars. People don't walk anymore. People uh, drive around the corner just to to buy a simple thing, you know. So the lack of uh, walking, exercise, I hate, hate to use the words exercise, the lack of physical activities mm -hmm. and uh, too much uh, intake of food and the carbohydrate food. Now, people always say, oh, it's the rice. It's not a rice. It's too much rice. Mm -hmm. And also, is the rice that's too processed. If you, the, some of carbohydrate food have a lot of fiber initially, but these days, all of our carbohydrate food, the flour, rice, are all very processed, refined. So we lose all the fiber, but we continue to eat more. So Scott, um, it's, it's obvious why she's involved in all of this. But as a layman, what got you interested? I think just the connection to my own family. You know, I, I, I have a younger brother. He's 24. And my father, both of them are, they've always been super skinny. And um, they, they always say, well, I, I'm not going to get diabetes, right? And my dad, uh, ever since he came to America for the past few decades, he would always have two Coca-Colas every day. And, you know, Surprise, uh, the doctor said, hey, you know, you are almost going to be diabetic. You got to change your lifestyle. My brother, I mean, he's younger than me, and he's eating fast food four or five times a week. Mm. And it just, like, I wanted to do something about that. You know, I, I, I want to make sure that people like my brother who tell me, I'm skinny, I'm Asian, I'm not going to get diabetes, I want to correct that. You can. You need to eat healthy. You need to be active. And I think that just... That's my mission, you know. I mean, definitely help the community, but help my own family, too. I, I want to get both of you to, to weigh in on this, because I think it's interesting, you know, when you think about uh, this connection between China and the United States, I mean, uh, we all walk around with the tablets, all these devices, all these great things that have really kind of helped us here in the United States, all imported from China. And then when you think about what we've exported to China, we've ex exported our sedentary lifestyle and, and these, these diets, 
and diabetes in a sense. I mean, how crazy is that? And I'll start with you. Yes, it's ironic. Yes, um, but this comes with abundance. You know, in the, there are good sides of the the, the, the being rich, and having enough food is not more is more pleasant than hungry, starvation, mm -hmm. the famine. Right? But you know, everything has the good side, and then there's a price to pay. Yeah. Well, I want to get your thoughts on this too, because you know, she was talking about. Um, you know, the sedentary lifestyle. I mean, if you look at imagery from China back in like the 50s or 60s, everybody's on a bike. Now, I was just in China last year, everybody's in the car. Yes. I mean, we have the same kind of traffic you see here in Los Angeles. It's been this shift. It's, it's, it's really interesting to watch, isn't it? I, I, I definitely think it's interesting. I think a lot of people have been talking about going back to how it was, right? Um, when people talk about what you eat, they say, eat what your ancestors ate. So eat what your great grandfather would eat how he would eat and what he would eat. And you know, at the same time, how would, they, how would they exercise? It wasn't really exercise, it was just ingrained in your everyday life. You were active. So I think, you know, it's great that we're getting technology and we're moving forward in many, many senses, but at the same time, how do we take it back and go back to what was working for us uh, to keep us healthy? So let's talk about on the ground, because I know you're in China quite a bit. What do you see there? And, and did you start to see it just kind of ramp up or was it just an explosion? I think it's uh, almost linearly related to the abundance. So yes, I think it's an explosion. In the sense that if you look at the whole China, you know, it's, it went from almost literally have nothing, very fast, building new buildings, have highways, have huge infrastructures, and come with this air pollution and so on. You know, so so it's, the growth is too fast. So therefore, I, I would call personally an explosion because it, the, the growth is explosive. But it's not like a light switch where you can turn it off, though. I mean, when you, you're talking about your own personal connections, your father, your brother, and the community at large, I mean, it's not something, and it's it, like you were saying, getting back to the, the basics, eating the way we used to. I mean, when we think of Chinese cuisine, I mean, that's a great way to live. Lots of vegetables. Uh, Great food, and yet now this kind of shift to the West and the, you know, the high-fat, caloric stuff—it's—it's uh, it's very different today. Yeah, I think it's interesting that it's more affordable to be unhealthy, right? If we want to go back to what we used to eat and be active like how we used to be, that's expensive. If we want to, you know, people don't grow their own food in their gardens anymore. They don't. Um, orga organic is expensive, but organic used to be normal, right? So it's just interesting that. That's what it is now. It's more expensive to be healthy. Let me ask you about, uh, you were talking about your dad. Is, is there denial? I mean, is the community accepting that this really is a problem, or are they, a lot of people still in denial, would you say? I mean, I would say <clears throat> that there is a model, mi model minority myth within health, within Asians, right? People just assume you're Asian, you're skinny, you're healthy. But that's completely wrong, you know? All because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. You can be skinny and still have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So I would say folks like my father, they denied it until the doctor said, hey, you're about to get diabetes, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very common trend when we work with people in the community. They, they don't see it as an issue. They're like, well, I'm not overweight. I'm not feeling any symptoms. And, you know, by the time you do get symptoms, it might be a bit late in the game. But Talk? there's a lot of things that is genetic too. It's not just environmental, you know. So you can be skinny or fat if you have acquired a certain kind of genes. You know, you are more vulnerable to certain disease. It's not just diabetes. You know, heart disease or allergies and all kind of things. If you have the genes runs in your family, you are just more likely to have a uh, certain kind of disease. What were you talking about? Now, the, the environment, in, the gene interaction is very important. Sorry for the interruption. Mm -hmm. So the environment often brings out the, the, the genetic uh, background of, uh, within the person. Well, well let me uh, piggyback off what you're saying, because body mass index, uh, it's different within the Asian community, isn't it, in terms of, of, of whether you're yes. struck or not? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, it, it, it's a different kind of a uh, Build. You know, there's a, a, this thing about the apple shape and uh, pear shape. You know, the uh, Western people tend to have uh, more hip fat, and so um, it's more apparent that, that people are obese. 
Chinese, it's not that they're not obese, it's people are not used to identify the obesity in Chinese because it tend, tend to be on the abdomen, you know, and as we always say, Chinese, at least my Chinese kind of people would say, you were flat before, how come you're round now? Because now <laughs> you're like, you know, uh, growing around it and it's trunk obesity is what we call. So the BMI may be lower, but BMI isn't everything, you know, the, the fat is what matters and the fat is not lower, percent fat is not lower. We have smaller bones, we have smaller mm -hmm. skeletons, but mm -hmm. it's not really uh, less fat. And this kind of trunk obesity, a lot of fat is inside. It's not just at optimum location, but it's visceral, meaning it's inside your body, which is full of vascular uh, vessels and it's very inflammatory. Yeah, I mean, I, w <clears throat> I would just go on the record and say BMI is just a silly scale. I mean, it's height okay. and weight, right? And it doesn't keep in mind anything that she just shared about body fat. You know, I could be skinny but have a whole lot of fat around my organs, and I'm right. going to be much more uh, prone to other diseases as someone right. who, you know, maybe only five pounds lighter than or heavier than me. Right. Now, uh, we've talked about the, the Eastern diet versus the Western diet, the acceptance of the Western diet, but what about medicine? Uh, do they still cling to Eastern uh, models of medicine and, and not as uh, likely to embrace the Western style of medicine? You're, well, you're, you're a practitioner. Well, well, to me, you know, I don't know what do you think, but at least in my mind, uh, by interacting with people, my colleagues in Taiwan, what we often uh, observe is Chinese tends to be, we call non-compliant. They like to go to Chinese herbs, Chinese medicine, and they like to not take the, the pills that the doctor uh, gave you. And they somehow think that because it's looking like a planet, looking whatever is better. But those things have never been tested. It's not, didn't go through clinical trial, has a lot of toxicity effect. That's why among the Chinese, as a complication of diabetes, for example, is often on the kidney. You know, and in fact, even without uh, diabetes, Chinese have a lot of kidney disease. Mm. I think these kind of uh, Chinese medicine contributed to that. Um, but you know, you may think differently. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we work with a lot of clinics here in LA County, and uh, the clinics tell us that, you know, when they're talking to their their uh, their clients, the Chinese clients, they want a quick fix. They're like, oh, I have di diabetes. Where's the pill? Where's the magic pill that will get rid of diabetes? Right. And you know, when they're told that it requires management, you know, you need to check your insulin levels, all these different things. A lot of them don't subs uh, subscribe to it. They're like, okay, well, you're just holding out on me. What are the the, the meds that I can take that I can get rid of this? So I think mm. right now it's an issue of we have p we can identify people with diabetes, but can we manage that diabetes over time? It's a yeah. fast food nation. We want fast fixes to the fast food that we yes. end up consuming. I have consuming. to say, media has some responsibility on this because there are often a lot of uh, broadcasting on TV uh, saying, oh, this is good for you, this is good for you. You know, population are very vulnerable to, to uh, the messages. TV's uh, the, 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 the messages because it's out there that they have no access to any other specific information, so this is what they see. So there are a lot of information that's not really that accurate, but they feel, they feel that, oh, look, there's this new thing, I should do this, therefore, you know, forget what my doctor told me. We're just about out of time, <laughs> but briefly, uh, what's being done to reverse that? Like he was saying, I want that magic pill. How do you change that kind of mindset? And I'll start with you and we'll finish up with you. Well, you know, so I'm part of a nonprofit called the a API Obesity Prevention Alliance, and for us, it's there's been a lot of work that's been put towards uh, telling people eat this, don't eat that, right? But there's not as much work around access. So for us, it's access to healthy food, access to healthy environments. So we're doing things like, you know, giving bikes to kids, and you know, really encouraging them to bike around their neighborhoods. We have a community supported agriculture program, which is boxed vegetables that we c connect directly with the farmers here, local farmers. And it's, I mean, it's a lot more, and I'm, we don't have enough time, but if folks want to check out our website, it's www.apioba.org. All right. Ida? Well, that's great that you are doing so. I think uh, there are uh, 
situations would need simpler uh, ways rather than go see somebody. You know, if people, if the population could just get a message or the Chinese get a message that you are not invincible, just eat less and just uh, do, do what your grandmother do, right? You, you, you can grow a little garden um, and digging a little dirt and all that is good for you. Uh, it, it's actually do not necessarily requiring uh, a huge amount of uh, advice from outside. You just do what your ancestors do. All right. Ida, Scott, thank you both for coming in. Thank you. Important topics, some great insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Next, young, urban, modern chefs, and most of them aren't even allowed to use the stove yet.